Welcome to Amateur Redneck Workshop. I'm Harold and uh, today I'm going to make a nose protector for my lathe spindle which is something that Mr. Pete advises you to do and it's a good advice too because if you mess up the spindle you've messed up your lathe pretty good. Uh, <laughs> and recently I made a video showing uh, the uh, ER32 collet set I bought which is the reason that I need the, the cover, you know, the nose cover for my spindle because once you put that collet chuck in there in, in the Morse taper well then you've got, uh, you've got exposed threads all the delicate parts of that spindle are sticking right out there in the air and you could come cut along there with a tool and shave all the threads off or something, you know and speaking of that, uh, <laughs> of that ER32 collet and I, my mistake trying to assemble it and use it, no, not use it, but test it to, for concentricity. The first thing on, in the box was this thing right here. Now there's there's not a, a woman in the world that would have failed to read this a at least maybe a couple of times. And then she'd have called some of her friends and discussed it at great length before she ever picked up a piece of the hardware. And she'd have known exactly how to assemble the darn thing. But me, I opened the box, set that over to one side, got into the stuff, you know, I, I don't want to lose my man credentials. So, uh, hey, uh, the instructions, what's that, you know? Anyway, let's make a, a little nose protector. And I, I talked to Chuck Bomarito. He's, uh, he's from Outside Screwball Channel. And Chuck's a certifiably nice guy and all that. He sent me a, a text there for all the way from California eh? and uh, said, hey, so how about this nose protector that fits your, your lathe? And of course, it was too big. And I said, no. He says, well, he says, I got some Delrin you could make it out of. And I thought on it, and I thought, well, hey, you know, I've got a whole bag full of Delrin just about the right size already that one of my viewers gave me. Well, it's in the same shooting club as me, and uh, that looks like a good use for this stuff. So I'm going to make a nose protector out of this Delrin and see what it looks like, and, and if I don't like it, I can make one out of aluminum as well. So instead of boring you any more talking, we're going to get on it. And to make matters even worse on that collet video, after I had made all the stupid mistakes with the collets, then I started running off at the mouth about this and when I watched it that second time later on after I'd already uploaded it twice it dawned on me, you idiot, don't you even listen to what you're saying. The motor, and I'll drop this thing down, is connected not to the ankle bone or the shin bone but it's connected to a pulley right here. I don't know if you can see it or not, but right up here. It goes down to this big pulley which they're both two-step pulleys there which goes through that door of it got a hook on the wire all right which goes through the side of the machine on this pulley which is connected to this pulley which is then connected to these two belts on the final output of the thing so if I want to disconnect the motor from hanging on to anything I just lift up this lever. Now the motor's not connected. It's still harder to turn, but there's still even one more thing if you're thinking when you're doing things. You can take this little guy and put him in neutral. That disconnects the gear train for it, to, it goes to the lead screw. Now then all you've got to turn is just a spindle. I uh <laughs> I don't know what to say to that other than that uh, I should have went to the range instead of making a video that day. Alright, well let's get on with this next job. Now there's a, there's a fellow that makes uh, miniature woodworking tools. And I mean really nice miniature woodworking tools. Sort of jewelry class I guess you could say because they're, they're really right. And I think the name of the channel is Hamler Tool. If that's wrong I'll put it down here at the bottom of the screen is to the right name. I think Hamler Tool is uh, the name of his channel or maybe you look for Paul Hamler. 
he was featured on uh, Mr. Uh, Keith Rucker's tour going to the Iron Fest, I think, one year. And Keith Rucker showed us all the fantastic stuff the man had made. So I'm going to also I'm going to put down below there in the doobly doo I'm going to put a link to his channel, so you guys can go over there and take a look at all the neat stuff he makes. Okay, so I've got this uh, nice piece of Delrin chucked up. I picked out a speed I figured probably appropriate, and I'm going to just kind of square it off here and drill a hole in it and get it close to the size for putting an inch and a half eight thread <coughs> excuse me going to get it close to the size for putting an inch and a half thread in it not altogether how fast you should turn Delrin but if it doesn't melt I'm probably not going too fast and uh, it's it's a beautiful February day here in Texas it's near to 80 degrees Fahrenheit outside I, I don't know how much that is in the metric system but it's, uh, it's getting close to, you know, summertime kind of temperature. All right, well, that little lever down there that you disconnect it with, you have to connect it if you want it to run. All right, so, we'll just place this thing off. It should be pretty easy at being soft material. I did kind of like cutting brass, didn't it? Now oh, that's smooth. Smooth as a baby's bottom. All right. Big enough. Let's, uh, let's see if it's in. Anywhere near some standard size. That's 2.192. I'm going to call it really good. 2.192 is good. So now to drill a little hole and we'll get a boring bar and bore it out to the right internal size and then we'll thread it. You guys take a nap. Yeah, I got a drill bit that looks like it wouldn't be too, too big or too small. I think I wanted to put it right in there. <laughs> I've heard that happens. 15 16 drill bit. I may be going too fast to cut that much, I don't know. Working. This is one of those drill bits I got when the hardware store decided to quit selling large drill bits. They were on sale to, you know, a really truly half off or more. It pours nice and easy, so all I have to do is not let anything go crash into each other, and, and I'll have it made. So right now I'm just a little bit above an inch. I'm going to one point, uh, I guess four nine. No, one point, one point three four nine. Something like that. I'll have to go look it up again now. I got to talking and already forgot. <clears throat> okay, I think this uh, must be about right. I had a hard find. I'm having a hard time finding any uh, chart that shows an inch and a half by eight. I'm sure it's there somewhere. It has Siri look for it and she couldn't find it. So anyway, I'm I'm going for 1.383. And uh, 
I think that'll be close. The the six threads per inch is 1.4 something. So if this is too tight, I'll just keep threading it until it fits. You know. After a long search, I found a uh, threading tool that'll do the job. And I've got the thing set for eight threads per inch. So we'll give it a, a shot here. I'm going to start on the even number on the dial, which I think it, any any one of the lines on the dial would do. But I always like to pick a number and stick with it, you know. So I picked number two, and I'm, that's where I'm going to start the threading every time. check and see what my scratch looks like. It's eight. I need a light. Can't see nothing. Not only is the material black, but the light's dark. Yes. That fits the scratches, so we're set up to go here. I'll start it and then I'll get you guys back when I've got somewhere. Well, I think I'm getting close here. And uh, we'll find out. We'll make another little cut and check it. One of the secrets is you got to get the stupid thing dead on center though. Or it just flat won't cut. My first pass through I had missed the center in it. I didn't want to cut anything. Alright. Told you we were close. I think that says close enough. Right there. I bet you thought I was going to have to take the chuck off and <laughs> turn it around. I've got this guy. So, he's my ready-made plug gauge. Alright, now I'm going to go in here just a certain distance and cut the threads out. I know, I went to all the trouble of putting them in. Now I'm going to cut them out. But, uh, this thing's got the smooth spot back behind the threads. And I need to uh, make it fit that. So, and they get tools changed out and I'll bring you guys back. Now, I think Pierre said something about chamfer before you thread. Too late now. I'll remember next time. Especially if you're seeing Alouette. You know, the old carrot the stick routine. Right, Pierre? So measuring the chuck over there, I need to go in about three-eighths of an inch for the flat spot. It's dumb to use that. I should use a boring bar. Hang on. There. Boring bar we started out with. Alright, I'm going to put you guys to sleep. Oh, there's my scale. Never mind. I was going to put you guys to sleep so I could find it. 
That's pretty well just dead on. All right, to see if the diameter is close to dead on. If it is, then we're through. Or at least for this part. It is 1.5, right on the money. <clears throat> so it's back to sleep until I move things around. All right, let's screw it on here if it will do it. That comes right up tight. Now I've got to, I think just part this thing off is the best thing to do. Because that's a lot of stuff to, to mess with. Probably that's what I'll do. I'll just part it off. That kind of chattered, didn't it? Doesn't look good when it chatters. So, I'll get another another tool and dress it up a little slicker, and then I'll wake you guys up. Well, that's a nice clean chamfer, I think. And, uh, let me get in a little closer. Looks slick to me. Now that I need to a little something there for grip, you know what I mean? And uh, I think I'll do that tomorrow, but I'll probably do that on the milling machine, just cut some grooves, you know? At least that's what I'm thinking I'll do. So you guys take, a, take the night off and uh, I'll be back.